Good morning, printmakers. This morning, we are gonna do a technique called oil resist. And the oil resist works because water and oil do not mix. So we are gonna draw with our wax-based writing utensils. This is a china marker. I also have crayons, which I'm hoping you all have around your house. And when we draw with our wax-based utensils and then try to use our water-based inks, the inks will not adhere to what we're drawing because water and oil do not mix. So we're gonna have, our ink is gonna come off of our plate and then we're gonna actually be able to pull the print of what's left over, which would be our drawing. So I'm gonna show you, um, you can use for this, you can use anything. I'm using a piece of paper. This is for my watercolor pad because it's a thick piece of paper. You can also use the front. You can use a piece of cardboard. You can use mat board. I just would not recommend using a regular piece of computer paper. It's not going to work. You just want something that has some weight to it and you're gonna draw on it. So the good thing, the cool thing about this technique, I think, is that most printmaking techniques you actually have to do everything backwards because everything is a mirrored image. But with this technique, everything is exactly how you're drawing it. That's how it is. So if you want to add text, add text. It will be exactly how you're doing it. So your project is to do something of the future, an idea of the future, a snapshot of the future. I'm going to draw some alien spaceships, I think. I'm a really bad drawer, so if you're also a really bad drawer, that's okay. You can, you can print things off the internet, you can create something in Illustrator or Photoshop, and then you can trace it. But I want it to be your own artwork, I want it to be your own ideas. So I don't want you to just pull an image offline, I don't want you to recreate an image that you've seen in a video game or on a TV show. I want this to be your own idea. So this actually looks like eyes to me. So my spaceship, that was my spaceship. But this actually looks more like monster eyes with eyelashes. See, if you thought I was kidding about being a bad drawer, I'm not. And this is gonna be my fake alien head. See, this is, this is how bad I'm talking. So yours is going to be a lot better than this, clearly. And you're gonna need five. So you're ultimately going to have five of these that you make. And then when you do this, you're gonna need your images cannot be bigger than your gel plate. So if you have a small gel plate, your image is gonna have to be smaller than your gel plate because you're gonna need your gel plate for this. So I'm gonna say that this is done. This is my image one of my series of five, which yours are all gonna be dramatically better than this. Oh, you know what? Let me try the crayons. As you do this, you're gonna to wanna to test out whatever supplies you have, test it out. This just broke. Crayons are so cheap. So you might not know like the China marker might work and some of the crayons might work and some other crayons might not work. Like I have 10 different brands of crayons in here and some might be really good and some might not. So I'm gonna just, this is kinda, I'm gonna use this as really like a, a test on what does work and what I don't think works. Okay, and this is super easy, it's so simple. So if you, if I was doing my first one as a test, I might just do a whole row of my crayons and a whole row of all the markers that I have to see if it works. So I'm gonna try this out. Hopefully we see that some of these work. So what we're gonna do is we are going to now color the gel. So for your first layer, the thicker paint is best. So I thought that I had some on here. Clearly I do not have enough on there. So I recommend using the Speedball paint this is the thick one and sometimes it's frustrating to use because it's so thick, but for this, you really need a thicker paint. This is one of those times that this really does make a difference. And see, so you can, obviously you can mix colors. If I wanted to, I could do 
more colors and make it a rainbow. You know, the you're you're only limited by your imagination. You can do whatever you want. If I wanted to do a strip of green, blue, pink, purple, like that's great. Whatever you want to do, however you think that will enhance your image, do it. Okay. So now that I have my ink, this is my water-based ink. Now I'm going to take my waxed filled image and I'm going to put it on my plate and I'm going to scrape and varnish it. So again, if you don't have a scraper, you can use a credit card, you can use a gift card, you can use the bottom of a cup that's flat, you can use a paint can, you can use your fingers you just want to make sure that you get your whole plate. Okay, so now I'm going to pick this up. So this clearly has paint on it. I'm going to set that off to the side and you can see my image. Okay, so on all the most paper, maybe if you just get smooth paper, it's not... But on all paper, you have a textured side. Hopefully you can see that. And then you have a smooth side. So when I put my image, I drew on the textured side on purpose because I wanted to see some texture, which you can see. You can see my paper texture in there and I like that. If you don't like that, then use your smooth side when you're doing it. But because I know that another textured side onto this is going to be really hard to pick up all the ink and all these little cracks. So I'm going to use my smooth side to then pick it up. So because my image and my paint are the same, I'm actually going to block off. I'm going to block off some of this with cheap computer paper. That way I get some sort of border on my, and you know what, I'm just gonna do it like that so we can see what worked and what didn't work. But if this was going to be my final print, I would mask off even these sides. That way I have an edge around my paper. But this isn't going to be my final, so it doesn't really matter. So now I'm going to burnish. Where is my scraper? And I should have double checked my scraper because it has ink on it that now I have on the back of my paper. So I know right away that this is not something I would turn in. I mean, I already knew that when I started, but. Okay. So I would say most of the things that I used did work. Let's see, I don't know if there's anything. Oh, no, that wasn't. Was that my image? That was my image. See, I'm so confused because it's so backwards. Okay, so that is my image. So I do see that the my crayons work. Those were my crayon marks right here, the circles around the 20s. And then I had extra lines, the thicker lines down there was a crayon. So really my crayons work just as well as the China marker did. So this is a two-tone image. So I have the green, blue of my paint, and then I have the white of the background. So this is, a, this is two colors, right? The white and the blue green. So you can see that the texture of my paper really came through. And even though I like my texture, I don't know if I like the texture for this image. So that would definitely be something to keep in mind because maybe you don't want the texture, you don't want that added texture to your image. So this would be, this is definitely a trial run, but this would be the one of your images. So I'm gonna show you another way to add a second color that's not white. So white is your first color, which is the paper, and then we have blue green. I'm gonna show you how to get two ink colors using this. So we're going to, I'm not gonna worry about the border. You know how to do that if that is your final image. And you have a, if you have a larger gel block than the drawing that you're doing, you know that you, you can mask off that area with cheap computer paper. Okay, 
This is a, something I had done earlier, but I keep it because I still have something I can use. So I always recommend never throw away anything you think is bad. Because even though I don't like this, I can still practice something on the other side of the paper. So you'll notice printmakers or hoarders, they don't throw anything away. So I'm going to do another thing on this. Let's see. This is a volcano. That's erupting. And out of it is flying spaceships and this time I will say that they're spaceships and not eyeballs but I am really awful at drawing but that's okay and then I'll pull one of those in okay this is simply to demonstrate and again I I use the texture side because I always like the texture but again I probably wouldn't do that Okay, so that's my volcano eroding, erupting with uh, two alien spacecrafts coming out of it. So again, I'm going to paint my plate. And I actually really like the the idea of several colors. I mean, again, do whatever makes you happy. This is some blue and red. Okay. So think about what your image is. So I have a volcano. So I'm gonna just turn this around because this is gonna be erupting in the sky. So that kind of makes sense, right? You wanna think about the color usage that you have with your image. So I'm gonna now place this down. I'm going to use my scraper. And this is really quick. You are gonna waste some paper, clearly. And I mean, there's no other way to really do that unless you you do small, like I chose the smallest paper I have so I didn't waste my larger sheets. Or you could just take a large sheet and you could cut it up into a lots of little pieces not to waste anything. Just start doing trials on this. Because printmakers don't like to waste anything. Okay, so there's my image kind of cool. I like the colors. And then you can see my volcano. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to try to get this to dry off just a little bit because now we're going to try to add another color onto here to get another layer of color. But if this is wet, what's going to happen is we're just going to mix all the colors together. So we're going to try to dry this off just a little bit and then if you go back in and you add another color to it the best is the thinner colors because those will spread the quickest so even though I used really thick speedball on this layer I would use a really cheap acrylic on the next layer that way it spreads really easy and I have a greater chance of success getting the image to pull up but again, as you do this, you're gonna see, like you're gonna have lots of trial and error. Everything is not going to be perfect on the first time or the second or the third. It's gonna take some time to get it right. And that's where you are able to learn. So I'm gonna wipe my hands off and I'm gonna use this. This is actually, it's a silk screening paint. It's for fabric too, it's very, the very wet, it's very liquidy, it's not thick, it's thin. So I think this hopefully will be a good one, but I don't know, I've never tried this, so this could be a fail. I'm hoping for the best. Okay, so I have, I have it on my brayer. I'm gonna 
trying to get it a little bit more even before I roll it. Okay, I have it on my brayer, and now I'm going to roll. Okay, and I don't want to keep mixing. I wanna to try to do it in as little passes as possible so I don't mess up the line work I already have on there by my great, uh, my great artwork that I have shown you. Okay, so I ran out of that paper. I'm gonna to go to same paper, this watercolor paper that I have. It's a little bit larger. And again, if this was going to be my final, I would mask off where I want my edges to be. I'm not really concerned about it. I'm just doing a demo. But if you were, if your image is like this, you would mask that off and not print on this without borders. Okay, so we're just going to try Hopefully we have success. So, I mean, some of the variables are the, what kind of paint are you using? Even the colors. I think that lighter colors on top work better than the darker colors. But I'll, I mean, if, if it's a wrong paint, it's, you know, there's just several variables. Maybe I didn't scrape hard enough. Maybe I scraped too hard. So if one didn't come out, I would just, you'd have to just try it again. Okay, so this is my volcano. And you can, t I can tell that I don't really see the stuff at top, on top very much. So even though on this image I have wipe this off so we can actually see what I have. So I have a spaceship and a volcano and I don't really see that on here. And I think that part of the problem is that I have lots of texture. And so I think if I use the smoother piece of paper, it might have come out better. So then on my next run, I would use a smoother piece of paper because you do you do see some, but now I'm wiping it so you're not going to see any of it. Okay, so that is, this would be adding another layer of color. And you can see down here, you still see the volcano, you still see the lines. This I think was just too dark and too thick for the line work that I had on the original. But that would just be another thing to play with. So we're going to try one more to see if we can get success on a dark color. And then I'm just going to take my a wet wipe and wipe this off. And another variable is time. How much time you let this sit. Maybe I didn't let it dry enough so it blended more together. Let's see if we can do this again. Okay, so we're gonna do another, this is still wet, okay. So I'm gonna take this, this is my top piece of my paper, that way I can waste less. And I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do a rainbow. you can see that this is just like a quick because I just want to see if this technique is going to work just like when you all are doing your images don't waste time on a perfect thing before you try out and see what is going to what your what your image what your mediums that you have what your supplies are what's gonna work what's not gonna work okay very quick quick and rough so now I'm going to try this again okay now I'm going to plug my image in Sorry. and I don't think on the last one I did I don't think I scraped enough away 
But this one is, the other side of this is smooth, so there won't be texture on this one, which I think caused me problems before. Okay, so let's see. Alrighty. Okay, so on this, you can see my rainbow is there. Should have probably rubbed more right here and right here because I still see a clump of paint. So that's something, you know, take your time when you're doing this. I'm obviously doing this really quickly. So now I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna try to get this to dry a little bit. And I don't think you want it to dry completely, but I would, I think you need to let it dry enough that when you put on this really wet paint, it's not going to try to mix up with it. Okay. So wish us luck on this one. Okay. So that's about as much as I'm going to paint that. I'm getting another piece of my paper. I'm gonna have the smooth side down. Forget which way I had that. And then I'm going to try to get my image to come out. So sometimes a clean sprayer works. Lots of trial and error. image I don't think the colors are very great but you do see that so now we have oil we have the underlay which was green and red and then you have the gold on top so these were the spots that I said I should have rubbed more because that should have been paint that came out of there so with the this is adding two ink colors on and you can see that that one is a lot more challenging than just having one so this one came off right away. We didn't have problems with this one. This one, you gotta have a little, a little patience with this one. You don't have to do the two different ink colors. You're just required to have one ink color, but each of your five images can all be different colors ink. So you can play around with it, see what you wanna do. And that is your oil relief project.